Hi, I'm Victor Gamov, developer advocate here at Confluent, and I'm super, super excited to be here. Be virtually, because I didn't go technically anywhere from uh, the place where you probably see me in the, in the last couple months, hopefully. Um, yeah, and uh, it's great to be here at uh, jconf.dev. And um, I will be talking about some of the topic that uh, is interesting in my, of mine. I really like to talk about Kafka and stream processing. And also, I would like to use a little bit different angle today. Um, usually, I'm uh, talking about how to develop apps. But this, uh, this time, I decided to talk a little bit about how to test those apps. And what are those apps, you might ask? Like, what are we talking about? And what's the challenges? What's the problems? And what we're trying to do here? So today, um, I will be talking about testing. And uh, let's do a quick test of our screen. Oh, looks like we don't have a projector in this room, right? Uh, because it's, uh, it's virtual. It's a screen share. All right. So um, welcome to this talk where I am will be talking about testing. As a developer advocate, I build highly scalable and highly available Hello World applications. And some of those Hello World, uh, Hello World applications need to live much longer than just a time where you know I'm doing this between presentation and so far and so on. So today I will be talking some of the history of uh, why uh, testing is important for me personally and how I end up in uh, in this topic and uh, what um, helped me to develop it. Also, I want to say a few words of thanks to my friends uh, that helped me with some of the interesting and the challenging questions. We, we developed uh, some of the um, um, interesting content together back in the day. I will put some links uh, in the slides so you will get the idea. But Ivan and Sergey, um, they help a lot on um, exploring the topic of testing, right? Uh, and probably most important slide since uh, you're here to learn something and you want to learn this from the code, not from this just blah, blah, Victor. Um, you want to learn this from the code and this is probably a most important slide. So what you want to do is press the pause right now. Press it, press it, come on, press the pause. Okay, and you take a picture or you can just like uh, go to this URL and after that you find the code. Um, if you don't find what you're looking for, you can always reach out to me in uh, Twitter, which is conveniently placed in the bottom of this uh, slide where you're watching. So hopefully you will get your uh, questions answered um, from, from that. A um, few words about agenda, what to expect in the next 30, 30 minutes. Um, I will give you an introduction of this problem and uh, how this uh, you know, term of Kafka applications and how are they different or maybe not different from other applications that you develop and use. I will talk about how to do uh, local testing uh, using uh, locally installed tools like uh, uh, Confluent Platform which is uh, another installation of Apache Kafka that we developed. There's like open source version of it. Uh, there's commercial features, but uh, we're not going to go in the commercial features today. Um, the next thing I will show you uh, how you can improve manual testing by introducing some of the uh, open source framework, namely test containers that allows you to leverage some of the uh, existing software to develop a um, integration test for, for your app. Um, next thing, we will move to um, the unit testing and we're moving to the specific framework to writing stream processing applications, the so Kafka streams and the Kafka streams uses um, this uh, test uh, topology test driver framework that allows you to unit test without any infrastructure. Uh, we will talk about this uh, KSQL DB as a stream processing uh, tool and also what kind of testing uh, capabilities are available there and how we can mix and match different tools. And at the end, as always, uh, hopefully you will be inspired by always be testing your apps regardless of the complexity. So um, before, before we jump into code and we'll start talking about the specifics um, of the tests, I want to talk a little bit about like how I personally came about this and why it is important for me. And hopefully you will find something uh, similar because sometimes when I go to conferences, people can say, yeah, you developer advocate, you're just here 
for uh, for marketing things, but um, it's not maybe entirely uh, true because marketing things and like learning this kind of stuff is important, but also I still do code. And some of the things that we develop, we develop uh, for people to use, to learn. And um, many times I've been in situations where I develop some of the examples or I develop some code and after that I moved on because I started doing some new presentation or maybe some new talk and after that some people can reach out to me and asking like hey this example doesn't work with current version there's something or maybe you just found this yourself how many of you have been in the stack or flow when you're looking for something um, <laughs> and you get this uh, weird situation that this uh, this answer is not working right so it's, it reminds me of some anecdote from the past where senior Developer is asking junior developer, hey, where did you get this code? And the junior developer was like, yeah, from Stack Overflow. Um, and the senior developer, yeah, I, I understand that. But from the question or from answer? Because sometimes um, questions also uh, might uh, find some, you, you might find some interesting things in the question. So we're trying to, once we started developing this new website, um, that I will talk about in a few seconds. We start thinking, okay, so we developed this and uh, can we spend the time to maintain this? Or we need to provide or like develop the set of tools or, or uh, techniques that allows us to, you know, develop this code and it will be always you know, good. So you will go there and copy this code like year after and still will be working. How we can do this? So the similar problem we were trying to solve while building this website called um, uh, Kafka, um, Kafka Tutorials. This website where you can take specific use case and I'll talk a little bit about the use case later. And after that, implement this using different set of tools. Uh, we decide to follow this approach uh, that's uh, called uh, literate programming and uh, the one of the, uh, the the father of this literate program was Donald Knuth he was expressed this idea of the system where your code and your documentation they will coexist so this is one of the things that allows us to develop um, uh, testable prose if you want when you're writing a tutorial or where I write tutorial text I also writing some code there and I want to make sure that not only uh, my text would be okay, but also my code will be still executable and still be runnable and so far and so on. So in this case, uh, we follow this approach and I would like to introduce you to uh, my little friend called uh, Kafka Tutorials. Kafka Tutorials, it's the kafka-tutorials.confluent.io. Uh, this is a website where you can go and learn stream processing, but not about, we're not going to talk about this today so much. This is something this is something that people see when they go to their website. This is something that I see when I'm going to this website. And it's actually dashboard of our continuous uh, integration server um, that will execute all tutorials. And each use case might have up to three different tutorials implementing different technologies. It can be implemented with using just a plain Kafka producer API. We'll talk about this. Kafka Streams and KSQL DB. And for each of these tutorials, we need to provide a test suite so we can execute this and make sure that tutorial will be constantly um, successful. So you see the metric. So we're not only growing number of use cases, but also we're uh, growing uh, numbers of implementation details. We also need to make sure that these tests uh, will be executed and uh, some of the new introduction of new things will not break existing, uh, existing code. So this is what's important for us, and this is how um, we just developed uh, tutorials that also testable, but also um, uh, teaching you something useful. All right, and what those tutorials are teaching you is the Kafka apps, the applications that allows you to deal with messages that come from the Kafka. So what is stream processing? What are those apps doing? Like what's the what's the idea? What we what we're doing here? And idea behind stream processing is rather simple. It's simple to explain, but maybe not very simple to um, to uh, to implement. For example, uh, we have a stream of events, events that happen, and we don't know when, when these events will will end. Uh, for example, website click streams. When you go into website, they click it around. They want to capture this, to analyze it, to understand 
how we can improve your experience on this website. So uh, we don't know when you stop doing this or when you stop and there's some other user will come to website. So we can also analyze this. So it's infinite stream of data, but also we don't want to wait until, um, I don't know, end of the day, for example. Uh, we want to get the result as soon as possible. So this is why we're applying this um, computation as soon as the messages will uh, will arrive. And um, usually this thing in between that, you know, the capture thing is your application because this is logic how those messages are combined and how those messages will be, you know, working uh, together and how those messages will be there. Um, and uh, if we're talking about, if we're looking into the stack specifically, uh, it, this stack is also rather simple. Uh, apart from the being a very complex and highly available uh, distributed system um, <laughs> in this particular case, it's rather simple. It has a three major components, components uh, in, in between that help uh, to, um, uh, to capture these events and store those events and process those events and like pass this events to the processor. Uh, it's called Kafka here. It's in the center. And uh, we have uh, producers, uh, that application that usually write data into Kafka and the consumer uh, write data into, into, uh, into Kafka. So in this particular case, um, this is a component that you don't develop. And we're not going to focus in on testing Kafka today. Um, it, there's a great talks that were um, done in the Kafka Summit in previous years where our engineers from Confluent, that company that um, I'm, I'm working uh, for, and we're also providing uh, support and we're contributing to open source Apache Kafka, we were talking about testing Kafka. So we're not going to be talking about this piece. We're going to be talking about this piece and this, this guy, so producer and consumer application. And usually producer and consumer application, um, they might be uh, two separate applications, right? So it can be application that only writing data. So for example, you have some source, you're reading data from some, I don't know, files, and after that you're producing to Kafka. Or maybe your application have only consumer. You need to read data from Kafka, and after that, you know, doing something with this data. However, in um, in real life, uh, the application frameworks that uh, exist to support that, they are more, more complex than, than um, just producing consumer. Even your application might also include consumer and producer. Um, and this is the same pattern that uh, Kafka Streams will employ. We'll talk about this. But essentially, we can have a data in uh, multiple, uh, multiple different topics. And those topics might include, uh, we can read data from one topic and uh, write data into another topic as a result. An application does this constant processing. This stuff is always on. And you don't need to, you know, run these jobs. It always will be running. Okay. All right. Another thing is that Kafka really don't care what kind of data you're putting there. It's really all about bytes. Kafka uh, reads the data from a producer, um, and uh, on the producer side, we just need to turn this this data into byte. So Kafka itself doesn't make any sense, doesn't know anything about your data and cannot introspect it. Um, same thing with. Uh, um, uh, you know, when you need to push the data, Kafka just be there, just an intermediate uh, tool that um, there and doing something for you. However, we need to make some sense for this data by uh, providing some extra information. Uh, the extra information might be just like a Java class that would be uh, available to um, when the data would be uh, deserialized from the network, or it can be something intermediate, like something that doesn't have uh, notion uh, of written in Java, for example, not Java class. So in this case, schema written in protobuf format or Avro format or JSON schema can be used to describe this data. And this uh, this thing will be stored inside this, uh, this small component called schema registry. So this is why also will be required to um, deal with this in our testing use case. All right, I'm talking too much already. So let's see some code uh, for now. And uh, uh, one of the things that you will see when you um, do um, get this source code, you will see three projects. And uh, we're going to be talking about all these three projects today. One is the uh, transforming events. So transforming events is just a simple use case where I'm, you know, let me talk a little bit about this use case, what we're trying to do here. Um, 
So our logic is, or is it transformation engine? So our logic is simple, as I mentioned in my uh, in my explanation. So I'm subscribing some on the topic with some of the data that just came in into um, into our system. We uh, while this data will constantly arriving. So in this case, we just like uh, have an infinite loop. We're reading these messages for input topic, and after that, we do something with this. So essentially, this is the logic of our transformation. So what is happening here? We have this um, convert row movie. What it does? which is reading data in one format uh, and turn it into data in another format. This uh, data is explained into um, Avro schema. So we have uh, this so-called raw movie that includes information about um, uh, movie uh, year inside the movie title. Maybe this is some legacy system that produced this weird uh, record for us. Um, and we want to produce another version that will include our uh, year uh, as a separate field. So in this particular case, uh, this is what we want to do. So how we can test this? So let me quickly show you. Um, so if I will go here and say, um, uh, I'm going into transform events, uh, there should be start compose. All these examples are, you know, dockerized. So I don't want you folks to, you know, go and install a particular software. I just want you to focus on, on the important bits and the software would be distributed as a Docker container. So we go into events. So in the way how this will work, I do have, um, um, we go in transforming events and I'll start the consumer, uh, consume. And uh, as a result, I want to produce some of data, produce. And also, I need to do run my application. Okay, so application is not there. So what I need to do is I need to build. Uh, yeah, I remember. Okay, so I'm not only build. I'll need to do shadow jar and X test. So in this case, I need to provide a, a jar that will include all these uh, the messages. So sorry for for this. Um, Okay, so in this case, run will be working. Yep, I remember there was something about this. Okay, so now we have this application up and running consumer and producer. So let's try to produce some of the data uh, and uh, the way how it works. Uh, we see if our, let's take a look on our internal data. We do have um, to, 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 to some input data, input data in a JSON format. You see the title includes year, and after that, our result is here. So sounds good. So what we will do, we will just like capture this output and compare this using diff command um, in um, available any Unix system, right? So this, uh, this would be easy. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I'm actually kidding. So it's not, it's not exactly like this. So the way how uh, we usually it's a manual testing. We don't want to do manual testing. And one of the things that you want to do this is to automate this process. So since we're already using uh, the containers here, we can imply, like apply uh, test containers as a framework for testing our stuff here. So the way how it works, uh, test containers allows me uh, create the same environment that I have in my uh, Docker Compose. I will be using CP Kafka, Zookeeper, there's a Zookeeper container, there's a schema registry container. So for this test, where is it? Um, where is my startup of the of my? I create in Kafka container. I create in Scheme Registry container. I don't need to create the Zookeeper container because Kafka container itself will uh, create a particular version of uh, Zookeeper container. Now, in my application code that I'm using, I can use this Bootstrap server, um, and after that, my Kafka container will be available in my test. And the scheme registry also will be available in my test. And the way how my test looks like, so in this case, I'm preparing this fixture data here, and this is my expected data. And based on this, I'm just using this, uh, like whatever framework you use, this just simple what assert G. Uh, this is a simple assertion from JUnit. So I'm using this one, just simple, just works. So 
in this case, it is uh, just uh, you know unit test. The, the 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 hardest part is taken by a test containers framework, and uh, you know how you can get all these things here. Um, it is kind of kind of fascinating. So you can get um, if you look into this code, you will get some some of the ideas how we can do that. All right. So let's move on to next topic. So let's talk about Kafka streams. So um, you need to do a lot yourself if uh, you develop stream processing application just using producer consumer API because there are so many things that already implemented for you uh, by Kafka streams. So you need to think about how you can do simple filtering, uh, how you can do um, some aggregations and some transformations that will be 100% uh, require some state if you need to do aggregation. You probably put some of the aggregations inside your database. You need to maintain this database somehow. Kafka Streams already includes this. So this is the part of the framework itself. Now, uh, not going to talk about this very deeply. In the previous uh, years, I did a bunch of talks about Kafka Streams. Uh, you can look it up in, um, in YouTube or, or so you can just like uh, ping me in Twitter and I will send you a few cool links. But most important thing, the Kafka Streams actually ships with a framework that allows you to uh, test your, your applications without even bringing any infrastructure. So this uh, framework called uh, Topology Test Driver. So in what it does, it allows you to define a um, the something that will take your topology. Topology, it's the uh, the sequence of steps that you need to your message will be going through in order to perform this like processing. If you have, um, say, a click event, we need to perform some aggregations. We need to get this uh, some sort of ID based on maybe user ID or user browser ID or somehow, and after that we get this as a group key. After that, we will need to perform this grouping operation to store this information for particular key source. This is a this is topology, it's also known as a DAG, which is called the direct cyclic graph that defines how the data flows through um, data flow. So topology is a very common uh, term in a data processing system. So you define your topology and you write unit test. And this is not an uh, integration test, it is a unit test because you don't need to um, again, bring any Kafka, you don't need to bring any Zookeeper, any scheme registry, nothing. Um, you just need to define what, how your data would be piped into this topology, uh, whatever data you want to pipe in this, to, to this uh, topology. And after that, you can read this data and validate those results. So let's take a look how it's done. So let's take a look how it's done in a second project that's called uh, Transform Streams. And it's the same logic of, of same, same, same application, but it is much more um, as a code. It's, the logic looks exactly the same. Same code that I showed you previously. It takes the raw movie, uh, performs split, after that extract this, and after that creates new movie. The way how it looks like from perspective of code, we're looking for something like topology. So build topology. This is our. Um, this is where our magic happens. Um, we define how we bring in data in, and after that we apply this map function in order to transform input data. Uh, once we get the stream of events by uh, string and raw movie, we get another stream of events by um, movie. Movie ID will be used as our. Uh, ID and the movie, it's a new object. And after that, we're writing data into another topic. As you can see here, this logic actually includes end producer and consumer. So that's why those are important, uh, important things. And let me run this real quick so you will see how fast this will be executed. So once I uh, run this, it will compile, run, and program one more argument. Path to configuration file. Really? Um, let me try to run this in, uh, in the command line. Maybe it, in this case, it doesn't require any. Um... I'll do uh, transform streams or even uh, transform streams. Testing streams. Gradle W transforming uh, 
experience. Uh, I'll do test. So, and the result is almost instantaneous. So, because it doesn't require to bring any, you know, dependency like Kafka and so far and so on. It uses mock scheme registry, which is also pretty cool. Uh, in this case, uh, you wouldn't need to also have a, a scheme registry as a container to run this. Um, and uh, the logic is absolutely the same. The logic is, is the same. So, if I'll go here, say... Ah, because I didn't run the test. Um, okay, so I will running this one. If I run the test, parsing, compiling, and this is the result. So it's just just uh, super fast. You don't you you should can even just like have a watcher that will be converting this stuff. And uh, so the key here is the topology test driver that runs this. We take the production topology. We're providing test properties, and after that. Uh, as a result, from test driver, we're creating topic where we're piping in data, and we have a topic where we're reading outputs. Once we get this out, actual output, we can compare those using whatever framework we're using. What we're using there here, we're using also JUnit asserts here um, as our assertions mechanism. Okay, now there's not not always uh unit tests are fixing because you know you're you, you already seen these kind of pictures in the past where um <laughs> unit tests are passing but uh integration tests uh is is um is something that fails so <laughs> things like this or things like this so thankfully uh there is a silver lining for this again test containers also can be applicable here and uh i did a live stream uh, where I was breaking down this, uh, you can find this uh, recording on the YouTube, uh, it's uh, my, my YouTube channel. Um, go there, check this out. Um, you can also like press the pause right now, just click this URL and watch it afterwards. Um, you, I was, I did have more time there, so I was able to go a little bit deeper. So anyway, and the last but not least is the testing KSQL DB. So what is KSQL DB? So KSQL DB is a very fascinating tool that allows you to develop your applications without any, you know, Java, Scala, or any language. It will use uh, SQL-like language as a, your DSL to develop stream processing application. Um, and also it supports things like um, a stateful, stateful stream processing, stateless stream processing, all these things are built in in KSQL DB. And also some, some of the cool things that build in is connectors that allows you to you know, fetch the data from external services uh, like databases and some of the, uh, I don't know, like whatever available as a connector, uh, KSQL DB will be able to read from it. Another cool thing about KSQL DB that is the KSQL DB ships with uh, Test Runner. Test Runner is amazing small tool that allows you to take um, your topology that described in this case, not in Java, but in SQL and uh, get input data, read output data and compare this for you. So in this case, you can see this is the piece of documentation that you can find on the KSQL DB, uh, DB website. You can have an input file, output file and SQL file that will include this. So let's take a look on this one. So in uh, in here, this is how this application look like. Same application that we developed um, in our uh, uh, previous steps. Same application, but just like much more concise. So in this case, we don't need to uh, write Java. So this is what how we can do this. Uh, we have one stream of uh, events that have a you know raw move information, and after that we have another stream of events that we apply function on the fly. So we're extracting this year, uh, extracting this title, and after that, save it as a property inside this. How are we going to be testing this? As a result, we need to have an input. Uh, this is our input data that will represent uh, topic information and our object that we're pushing there. So we're pushing there this object with uh, title and year, and after that, we're getting output here. So how we can run this? So let me go there quickly uh, where I am uh, CD uh, testing transforming uh, KSQL DB so we can do there's a couple things 
Um, this uh, KSQLDB CLI, uh, or sorry, uh, KSQLDB uh, test runner can be available as standalone application. But again, I, I like to bring this as a um, as a Docker service. So in this particular case, I'm just need to use this um, uh, CLI. I need to start this KSQL CLI service. Uh, it's uh, up and running. And next thing is that I will do uh, this run test. So what this do is it run this with parameter input is our input data. Parameter output is our output data and our SQL file that will include our application. So when I run this, uh, it will start, uh, it will go and run this inside this container and it says test passed. How we can make sure that this test is actually passing here. So let's see. It's going to be uh, work in the cloud, say 96. So in this case, when I run this test again, I should be able to fail. So in this case, test fail, topic, parse topic, message two, expected uh, 95, uh, but it was 96 as a year. So in this case, it's not, it's not right and it works. And uh, let's see if we run this once again, and it also should work. As, as as promised all right so and into conclusion uh, what uh, we have learned today this is me um banging my hand around when i was uh, like facing some of the problems with my code in the past but now i know how to test my apps uh, how how to test the simple kafka applications for simple Kafka applications, you can use things like a topology test driver. You can use embedded Kafka, which is the framework that comes with Kafka. Um, I don't personally like it or recommend this. I would rather prefer to use these uh, test containers for, for testing scenarios. Uh, for Kafka streams, I would recommend to use um, a topology test driver, which is a great tool that uh, allows you to unit test your topologies and uh, perform these things much, much better. Uh, perform testing much faster. And for KSQL DB, obviously use a uh, KSQL test runner. So it's great. Um, and um, test containers, again, it's a, it's a great tool. Highly recommend to, to check this out. And again, always be testing. All right, always be testing. If you want to learn more, if you want to learn more about this, yeah, please go to this website called developer.confluent.io. Developer.confluent.io. Okay, remember? Also, you can go there and watch this uh, awesome video that I did explaining why developer.confident.io is my second favorite place on internet. And uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is it for our journey. I hope uh, this presentation was useful for many of you. Uh, my name is Victor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day.